Hi, so this is the second video for Boston, more than a feeling. Um, now in the last video we went up to, we did the intro and the verse and the embellishments that happened in the verse and that took us up to uh, 37 seconds into the song and this part we're going to do the pre-chorus and that's on the on the video, on the moving tabs video, that takes us from 37 seconds to about 42 seconds. It's just that short section, pre-chorus I'm calling it. So we've had the verse and we've got to the third fret of the A string and then we're at the second fret of the A string and then you've got that bar, let me have a look at it, that goes one and two and three and four and then that slide from the 4th fret to the 5th fret of the D string. That happens really quickly and you can see that on the tab because the number 4 is smaller which means it's a grace note which means you don't spend any time on it at all. It's just a expressive technique. So the timing of that 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 one and two and three and four and if you find that difficult because I'm sliding with my little finger you can see because I find this stretch too much let me see if I'm getting that into yeah I'm finding that stretch too much so I do it with my little finger now if you find it difficult to do that slide up one and two and three and four you could just go straight to the fifth fret with your th third finger or your little finger, whichever one you're going to use. One and two and three and four and the next thing you have to do is get up to the seventh fret. So let me do that again <clears throat> and I'll do it with the slide. Of course I'll do it slow. So one and two and three and four and yeah. Then the next thing, one and that's the next bar, yeah? The chords in it are A minor and G. And we've got 7th fret of the D string. Then we've got this little figure, as it's written in the tab, I don't think it's right, but I'll do it like it is in the tab, because it's in the tab. Um, and that makes things simpler. Um, and then I'll show you an alter alternative uh, later. But we've got 5, 7, and 0. Now that 0, happens so quickly, that open A string, that I'm doing a pull off. Fifth fret on the D string, that's fine. Seventh fret on the A string, that's fine. Then I'm going to pull off from that seventh fret to the open A string. So rather than try, I could try picking it all, but I find it easier to do a pull off. If you do want to pick it all, pick it. So, yeah, you know, uh, pluck it with your with your fingers. Now, hang on, let me get this back on the screen. If you do want to pluck it all, an easy way to get speed is rather than single fingers or different fingers, alternate fingers doing the different strings, rather than that, here's fifth fret on the D string and here's fifth fret on the A, sorry, seventh fret on the A string. Now, I'm going to rake, what they call rake. This is a rake, yeah? You just drag your finger, whichever one it is, second finger, first finger, and those are the two usually used. People don't usually use the third finger, although by all means, if you find it easier, go for it. Um, but most people don't, so they just find the walking fingers, fingers one and two, easier. Now, if you're traveling this way across the strings, it's a lot easier to do this rake so there, I'm raking from 5th fret of the D string to 7th fret of the A string. So if I was picking those three notes, 5, 7, 0, I'd rake with one finger, let's say my, whichever one it is, let's say my first finger. So I drag that across the D string, then the A string. And with my picking, with my fretting hand, I'm releasing the pressure of the 5th fret note once I get to the 7th fret note, yeah? I don't want them ringing out at the same time. It's too much on a bass, yeah? It's just too mushy because the bass frequencies of the notes, yeah? They're, they're not 
clear enough to usually to have them both going on together. So as I do this rake with my first finger here, just dragging it up the strings, I play that note or I fret that note and then release the pressure on the fifth fret as I get to the seventh fret, yeah? Then for the last note of that little da-da-da, that's the open A string, and I pluck that with my second finger. So I've raked with my first finger, yeah, got to the seventh fret, then I pluck the open A string with my second finger. And there I just did a little mistake at the beginning. You could probably hear the fifth fret note still rang out and it doesn't sound good. So you've got to get used to. How do you get used to it? Do it slowly. Practice slowly. It's the only way, yeah? So practice that of playing that note, fretting that note, then I release the pressure on that note once I get to this note. I mean, these are things we've done anyway, but yeah, just a, a recap, a reminder. So if I'm um, playing all these notes, if I'm plucking each one, each three of the notes, rake, rake, and then second finger. Or I could do the hammer on, sorry, the pull off thing that I said earlier. At that, I find easier in a way on this hand, pressing hand, but you do have to make sure you're not keeping this finger on the string uh, with pressure. In other words, you don't want that note to keep ringing out, yeah? So you've got to do a bit of a balancing act. It's a bit difficult to get at first of playing that note, releasing the pressure, but I keep my finger there to make it easier, just to stabilize my hand, really. And then third finger on the seventh fret of the A string, and then a pull off. So that's the pull off way, and that's the plucking each note way with this rake. Okay, so hopefully that's okay. Now, oh yes, at that point, what I actually hear, I don't actually hear that. I don't hear that open A string note. Maybe I just can't because I'm listening to it on a, on a laptop at the moment. Um, but I hear this note here, which is an A, and this note is an A, but this is an A an octave up. So what I think he does, um, I'll have another listen to it later. But if you prefer the sound of this, and if you, and if it feels easy to play as well, five, seven, and then seven on the D string. Yeah. So instead of there, yeah, da 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 da. It's a choice. So don't do both. It's one or the other. And then what happens next? We've got. Then we've got that note, yeah, fifth fret of the D string. So in that um, second bar that I'm talking about, where it says A minor and G for the chords, we've got. Oh, let me put it in context. We've got one and two and three and four and one and da 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 da. Yeah, so we got to that note. Then we've got this little figure again, da da da. -dum. 757 seven. and again I'm doing this I am picking each note this time and I'm doing the rate thing with my whichever finger I uh, use first finger or second finger for the rake seventh fret fifth fret and then seventh fret on the A string yeah so D string seven five and A string seven I'm picking with this hand, alternate fingers, in this case finger one, finger two, then whichever finger I am plucking this fifth fret note with, I rake it down onto the A string, yeah? Did you see that with this hand? First finger, second finger, rake onto the A string. Because this movement is a lot quicker usually, then doing separate fingers, second finger on the D string, 
first finger on the A string. Now that's if you're doing rest strokes. And remember, rest strokes are where you pluck, pluck a string, and your finger comes to rest on the string above. Yeah? Like this. Now, if you're doing uh, what they call free strokes, where it's more like on a guitar, you're just plucking the string and your finger ends up in the air. Well, in that case, separate fingers for separate strings, that can work. You can get pretty fast doing that. But the thing is, there's such, there's such thick strings on a bass that you might find that your fingers kind of get caught behind the strings a bit. And hence this rest stroke approach might be easier. So rest stroke, yeah, pulling the string, pulling the pulling the finger across the string, yeah. Gosh, I wouldn't have thought this little section had so much technique in, but but it does. <laughs> okay, so finally we're on to the bar where it says uh, D9 as a chord over the bar. So, so far we've done this, one and two and three and four, and, oh, I got that wrong, one and two and three and four and, right, so now we're on to this bar, one and two and three and, that bit simple, it's just all on the fifth fret of the A string, the timing, you can see it in the, in the standard notation, which is above the tab, we've got a crotchet and then four quavers. So one and two and three and then we've got the sixteenth notes again of the semi quavers. Da da da. Four E and. Uh. Now I could either play this seventh fret on the D string, seventh fret on the A string. I could either play it with two separate fingers. I naturally do. I tend towards that. Or you could do it as a bar. If you're doing it as a bar, again, you don't really want both notes sounding out. Yeah, too muddy. So if you do it as a bar, you want to do that rolling the finger. Yeah, I've got the. Hang on, let me go back and see what I'm looking like. I've got the um, the last digit of the of the, in my case, third finger on two strings. And I'm moving the weight, yeah, from the bottom of the digit to the top, from the bottom of the segment to the top of the yeah last segment of that finger, yeah. What's that called? Your segments. Oh, God, I can't think. Anyway, you know what I mean, yeah. Like this part, last joint. That's it, last joint. So moving the weight from that part to that part, yeah, by rolling, yeah. And how am I rolling? I'm rotating my head or moving my hand in this way, yeah. So that I'm moving the pressure from the bottom of the joint to the tip of the joint, the last segment of the finger. Okay. Then what have you got? Then you've got. Then you just got an open A string. But technique on this hand, picking hand, again that rake thing, yeah? I'm doing rake with my first finger and then the open A string plucking with my second finger yeah so those two because uh, yeah because I can do this rake from D string to A string I'm doing that with one finger and then plucking the open string open A string with my second finger. Right, well, that went on much longer than I thought. That's going to be an enormous video. So I'll, I'll upload that and I'll send a link, okay? All right. Take care. And then I'll get on to the, um, what's it called? Uh, the chorus. That's what it's called.